Indonesia is a series of islands in Southeast Asia, known for its rich culture and beautiful scenery. However, in 1815, this idyllic land was subject to something heinous, a volcanic eruption with effects felt worldwide. On April 10th, 1815, in Sumbawa, Indonesia, Mount Tambora erupts. Villagers hear far off noises that sound like cannons being blasted and see columns of fire. Ash is carried up into the air, engulfing the islands in darkness. Some ash is carried more than 400 miles away. Pyroclastic flow, a deadly mix of lava and ash, speeds down the volcano at 125 miles per hour. 10,000 people are directly incinerated. A whirlwind starts up, lasting an hour. 15 foot high waves swallow the shore. Then, the initial shock ceases. But the volcano continues to erupt, and the devastation is far from over. The eruption has finally ceased. The two foot thick ash that has been raining down for months prevents any crop growth and kills animals. In Indonesia alone the death toll has reached a hundred thousand. For the next few months the dust cloud will move across the globe and eventually engulf a large portion of the earth causing bizarre effects worldwide. Before the destruction continues, the sulfur scatters the red wavelengths of sunlight in Britain. This is one of the last images of beauty the world will have before the ash finally catches up to them. By then, the ash has spread out into the Western world, causing some bizarre effects. Cold weather was caused because of ash blocking the sun's heat. All over the world, crops and animals died. Snow turns strange colors. Temperatures drop from 90 degrees Fahrenheit to 40 in the course of one day. People resorted to eating the unimaginable. Straw, sawdust, moss. Grapes failed to ripen and wine couldn't be made. Over 90% of the summer days here are bogged down with rain. People go to war with each other over food. The effects were tragic. The U.S. economy slowed because it was unable to produce food. Europe's economy was ravaged even more because they had been recovering from the recent Napoleonic Wars. Because of a limited food supply, inflation was present worldwide. It would take years for the global community to recover from the year without a summer. Now we can categorize a volcano by its VEI its volcanic explosivity index. It gauges how much lava is ejected by the volcano, and the scale increases exponentially. On a scale of 1 to 8, Tambora was a rare and very high 7. New technology can help us learn more about these deadly forces of nature. We can use satellite imaging from space to predict a volcano and its oncoming threat. Scientists also use thermal infrared technology to detect where the magma is in the volcano. Volcanoes are very interesting in the form that they explode outwards. Magma builds up in this magma chamber. Think of it like a giant metal ball with water inside. As you heat up the metal ball, the metal ball expands. The water inside evaporates, causing the metal ball to expand even more. In this way, as the metal ball expands, it causes all this pressure inside and it wants to come out. So eventually, as it keeps expanding, you start to see cracks inside the magma chamber wall. As the cracks progress, steam comes out. And as steam comes out, the cracks progress even more, eventually causing a break. And everything inside the magma chamber, all that lava, rock, and ash, just skyrockets upwards because it finally has a release. In 2010, it was predicted that a volcano in Iceland would have the same sunblocking effect as what happened in Mount Tambora. The same catastrophic event could happen again in the recent future. 
Although Mount Tambora ignited a global tragedy 200 years ago, that does not mean it isn't relevant today. In fact, by studying what happened, we can prepare for and understand more about a similar occurrence in the future. Mm -hmm.